D-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause only this is ready Forget about it Goodbye Hold up, we just saying hi Five somebody rise up Weekdays Catch us live Somebody let's go Good morning And good afternoon everybody Welcome to the Pascal Show Um There has been so much that's been developing over the past few hours, overnight, actually, for the past half of the day. I've been sitting back and waiting to come on and talk to you guys about this because I got to be honest, this is um, this is not great news, in my personal opinion. Uh, we right now uh, know that Russia has invaded Ukraine, the Ukraine, and, and the thing is, is I wanted to come on here and talk about it because we need to we we need to chop it up. We need to talk about this. This is some serious stuff, y'all. Some serious stu- serious stuff is going on right now and um I am still trying my best to wrap my own mind around this situation and you know we talk about everything that's going on in the world, not only in the world but obviously, you know, what's going on in our own neck of the woods if there's something that's popping off and this has been such a huge story and I've been for my own self, for me, I have been avoiding this like the plague. I've been avoiding this because I just didn't want any, I didn't want to talk about it because I didn't think anything like this was going to happen, even though I knew something like this was actually going to happen. Let's keep it real. Um, but now we know. I mean, we already know this, unless we've been sleeping under a rock, living under a rock, Right. Russia has invaded and now is doing some devastating stuff to the Ukraine right now. So much that I got some some we got some articles that we got to look at and all that. And it, it like I said, this is just so sad. I'm gonna be real. And you you're right, Queen JT. I mean, there's no way of avoiding this. There is no way. There's no way to avoid this, right? But I was avoiding it because I was hoping that this would turn into, you know, people just rustling their feathers, talking a whole bunch of mess, but not doing anything about it. You feel me? I was I was fingers crossed on this. You know what I'm saying? And now we know that uh, we are dealing with some serious stuff right now. Many hundreds of innocent lives have either been injured or have been destroyed hundreds of lives have have been lost hundreds of lives have been lost um many people um are are saying goodbye to their loved ones right now um so that they can stay back in the ukraine and try to fight russia from their invasion and the thing is is that there's other speculations and stories now of a possibility of china going and invading taiwan actually using this opportunity to go and invade Taiwan. We do have Biden, President Biden, supposedly going to be jumping on the mic and making a speech to talk about everything that's going on. Um, It was supposed to be on. It was actually supposed to be on um, about 15 minutes ago, but it's been postponed. So I'm still kind of waiting to see what happens with that as well. Um, Because, yeah, this is all crazy news. Now, people have been speculating, is there a possibility of a world war? You see what I'm saying? Going on here, I don't know. We got to see what happens with what Biden says here in the the next, hopefully within the next hour or so. Um, But like I said, I didn't do a, a show this morning because I knew this was still developing. Things were still percolating. Things are still cooking, and I wanted to jump on when we were actually hearing something from our leader, from the president, and and hear what is really going on here. Um, But, you know, I know the fam, you know, y'all are amazing. Please keep an eye out. If if Biden does jump on, let me know or let the fam know so that they let me know so I can pull this up because obviously I got to open up a couple uh, lines and uh, a couple – uh, websites and, and articles here. And, uh, you know, this is just still a mind blowing 
um, set of events that has happened overnight. And I heard there was speculation. There were stories. You know, there were there were people saying, oh, yeah, you know, Russia's going to invade overnight while we're sleeping. It's about to go down. So we'll see if he actually we'll see uh, uh, what time Biden actually does go on. But allegedly he's supposed to be on at around. Well, Zozo Bob, thank you so much. He's saying allegedly he'll be on around 1 30 p.m. I'm ass assuming 1 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hopefully within the next 40 minutes, I'm assuming uh, maybe I'm wrong. OK, but of course. War is nothing to make fun of. War is nothing to to laugh at. Um, it is a very serious thing, y'all. And this is a big moment in history right now. Um, there has been a lot of history, okay, a lot of tension between these two diff these two countries. And the last thing I want to have happen is something like this, where we lose innocent lives and. You know, there's certain pieces that I can't show you because it's way too graphic. But there was one video that I saw. It was a web, like a, a security cam, street cam footage of, it was just like a regular street, but it shows like this little kid riding their bicycle. And then all of a sudden, a bomb just goes off. Wiping out everything in its path, including that little kid that was riding that bike. We have another video that I posted on my Twitter that I'm going to be showing you guys here in a second of a father basically saying his goodbyes to his his loved ones um, as he takes them to a safe zone and uh, says his goodbyes to his loved ones. So he can stay back and fight and try to fight the Russians that have actually invaded his home. Like I said, this is just devastating, all of it. And we're going to get into as much as we can right now because, I mean, there's a lot I can't show, right? There's a lot I can't show, but I'm going to try as best I can to show you, to show you what's going down. And as soon as Biden jumps on, we will jump on that and watch him because obviously this is history in the making right now. And oh, man, I got so many things to say right now, but I'm not going to go with it right now. It just it just angers me so much that there are people out here like I woke up this morning. Let me let me take this down really quick. Let me take this down really quick. I just I, I just need to speak to you guys. You know what I'm saying? I I need to talk to my family. All right. Um, and before we get going, please do me a favor. I know this is not the greatest of news and all that, but please hit that like button down below. That would really mean a lot. Send those likes all the way up, all the way up for positivity. And hopefully this is something that gets remedied very, very quickly. But God knows how quickly is quick. So please hit that like button down below. Send those likes all the way up. And of course, do not forget to crush that subscribe button. Be really great to have you a part of the Pascal Show family. We talk about everything from true crime to pop culture to controversial news to breaking news as well, world news, international news. So please be sure to uh, hit that subscribe button if you just want to have be a part of the conversation or just be up to date on what's going on in the world. Anyway, I just wanted to say this because I woke up this morning. Finding out, like, as I'm going to sleep, as I'm resting my weary little head, I hear about this uh, possibility of an invasion, like, that they were going to possibly drop bombs, okay, on, the, on Ukraine. I go to sleep with no worries in my mind. And then I wake up the next morning to... Pages and pages and pages of just nothing but attacks, visual, visuals of nothing but devastation. One of them that really hit me was the one I just described to you guys about the, it was just basically a street, a kid is riding their bike, and all of a sudden, a bomb just goes off. Like, it almost seems like it just went off 
right in front of this little kid's path. An innocent child. And now that child is nowhere to, is not here anymore. And one thing that I keep wondering, what kind of human being would wake up, have their tea or their coffee, stretch their legs, have a few meetings and say, yes, drop bombs on innocent lives. I don't care. Just a simple stroke of a pen. The, the little old John Hancock signing away the lives of hundreds of people that have been lost during this bomb attack. This wasn't troops. This wasn't some crazy arch nemesis that's off to try to destroy Russia. These are, these are regular, innocent lives that are no longer here. I understand war is a, a, a terrible and disgusting thing, but this is the most monstrous, most evil thing I could ever possibly think of to inflict on innocent lives because you just want to, you want that. You want to take over. So when I saw this and I woke up this morning, I was like, you know what, as, as, as messed up as it is, I'm going, you know, we have so much, we have so many privileges here. We really do. We have so many privileges here. We don't really have to sit here and worry about something like that for the most part, right? I mean, I just saw that one video of that one little kid riding their bicycle. Thinking about their lives, thinking about their future, and now they're no longer here because somebody flew by and dropped a bomb on, on innocent people's lives. And I mean, like I said, I'm going to be showing you guys some footage. It's not like there's just a, a, few, a few people that have died. There's been many people who have died. Many lives have been lost. Many. Real quick, hey, watch this. Thank you so much for the $20 super chat. Sadly, America, Americans like Trump, his Republican supporters, and the, can't say that word, are supporting Putin, which I don't get. I do not get that part. Some feel they would be happy if Russia took over America to keep it hot. Yes, they are saying these things online. They are. I've been seeing a lot of trolls out here uh, saying all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, ex, you know, ecstatic uh, about what's been going on. This, to me, is a pure, unadulterated description of evil. You have someone who went out of their way to say, yep, nope, go ahead and drop bombs on these people. I don't care if these people are law-abiding citizens or if they're the most evil of evil doers. Wipe them from this planet. And I'm not for that. To me, I look at Putin now as a war criminal. That's how I see him now. I don't see him as crazy Putin now. Now I see him as the T word. You know what I'm saying? Now, will this spark or inspire another WW? If you feel me, I don't know. But there's been a lot of things that have been, he's been saying that has been fairly cryptic that we need to jump into. But like I said, I digress. We got to get into this whole thing, right? Uh, and see, here's the thing. Badger Life said... Um, Biden is the most racist person alive. Okay. If Biden is, sure, that's fine. But I don't see him invading a country so far and just dropping bombs on innocent lives so far. I just don't understand why people are out here trying to defend somebody who is trying to eradicate people, innocent people in a country. But here it is. 
We can we can agree to disagree on this. And I think this is the reason why I have been very uh I have been very hesitant about uh popping up about this this particular topic because people are jerks and there's trolls out here that think this is okay, that this is a thumbs up. And I'm sitting there going, Where who who raised y'all? <laughs> who raised y'all? Come on, man. These are innocent lives, man. These are innocent mother loving lives Maif, thank you uh martinez thank you so much for the uh, five dollar super chat putin started it started in the kgp kgb all we need to know about is how he thinks about things the x absolutely and like i said there's other pieces of information in here that he's going to sit he says here that is extremely cryptic he says, like, I'm going to, you know, uh, there will be attack like no one's ever seen before. Is he talking about a nuclear strike? What is he talking about here? What is he pertaining to when he says there will be a, an attack like no one has ever seen before? What does that mean? Shoot, they just literally about an hour ago took out their airport. Just bombed it clean to kingdom come. Now, people are trying to leave this country. People are trying to seek refuge away from this place because they didn't want to wake up with bombs. They just wanted to live their lives. Their own version of the pursuit of happiness. And now those people are now either mending wounds or mourning over their loved ones, over the, their own countrymen. But let's continue on here. Let's look here. And like I said, this is all just from Daily Mail, and it's just been one after the other, after the other, after the other. I mean, there's just insane amounts of content right now because it's still developing as we speak. They are still bombing. They are still shooting. They're still doing all kinds of crazy stuff in Ukraine right now as we speak. But Kiev troops shoot down five Russian helicopters, destroy dozens of tanks, and capture scores of troops as Putin's forces suffer heavy losses, which is a good thing. Okay? They are starting to fight back. And I might be ahead of myself here, but they are starting to fight back. So I keep wondering, what is Biden going to do about this? Is he going to do anything about this? I just, uh, I don't need us to go into war. You feel me? The U.S. don't need to be sticking their nose in everybody's business, but I do understand that Ukraine is an ally. They are an ally. What do you do when you have Russia, where they have a substantial military? What do you do? Do you just sit back and let this all this go? As a president, or do you stick your nose in the business? But let's continue. Uh, Russia troops attacking Chernobyl could set off radiation cloud across Europe. Ukraine warns as as a device hits a ship owned by NATO or, uh, member Turkey in Black Sea, and Kiev sends citizens to shelters ahead of imminent bombing i can't really go around this and i mean this is there's a little graphic so i apologize but you know putin's innocent victims you you have people who are who i have dealt and lived through the the bombing that happened overnight and of course i don't know what is going on with sean penn but Sean Penn come through for some weird reason. He wants to be all up in it. Okay. Now, there is something I wanted to show you guys. I need to pull this up because. Come on. Putin actually did say something. That was very strange. That was very, very strange. A lot of people are wondering if he was saying something. That was um, trying to uh, hint 
at a possible strike, right? So let me pull that up really, really quick. Where the heck is it? All right. So there is a little clip from CNN. Here it is. Let me pull this up for y'all so you guys can see this too. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, is calling this a, quote, special military operation to protect Donbass. It is clearly bigger than that. Now, he made a surprise appearance on state television calling for the demilitarization of Ukraine, blaming the government in Kyiv for bloodshed, but said Russian forces are not planning an occupation. Whoever tries to interfere with us, and even more so to create threats for our country, our people should know that Russia's response will be immediate and will lead you to such consequences that you have never experienced in your history. Now, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, he went on Facebook again to address the nation. He says he's imposing martial law but urged the country not to panic. Today, each of you should stay calm. Stay at home if you can. We are working. The army is working. The whole sector of defense and security is working. No panic. We are strong. We are ready for everything. We will win over everybody because we are Ukraine. Jim, you are there this morning witnessing generations of post-World War II order upended. John, that's right. We wake up this morning to a war in Europe a deadly one already. Take a moment to consider that. And it unfolded, it began to unfold last night uh, in what you might call a worst case scenario. U.S. intelligence assessments for weeks had been saying that Russia was preparing for a broad scale invasion of this country, beginning with an air campaign and a missile campaign and an artillery campaign. That's exactly what we saw, quickly followed by ground forces. The first targets hit with crews and ballistic missiles uh, in Kyiv, the capital, in and around Kyiv, the capital, uh, in Mariupol, in the south, and in the northeast of the country in Kharkiv, hit by artillery barrages. And very quickly after that, that effort to, in effect, soften uh, the battlefield as well as strike military targets to disable, attempt to disable the Ukrainian military, came the ground forces across the border, including armor. And it's, it's interesting, you showed those pictures earlier of tanks rolling along the highway uh, from north of the country in Belarus here into Ukraine. We had a lot of talk early on about how the weather would cooperate. Would the ground be frozen enough in the east for those tanks not to get bogged down in the mud? What did we see in reality? We saw them driving down the highway into this country uh, at top speed. That's how quickly this unfolded. Uh, we are hearing of this morning, though, of resistance from the Ukrainian military. There is a fog of war. We have to acknowledge that. It is hard to count casualties at this point, though both sides are claiming them. Both sides are claiming as well to, to have destroyed targets uh, on the other side. It is hard to uh, corroborate those until you see them yourself. I, I want to get to how this extends, may extend beyond Ukraine, because we heard just a few moments ago from the NATO Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, uh, speaking from NATO headquarters in Brussels. And he said this, and I think, uh, John and Brianna, this, this puts a, a point on it, if you want to say. He says that we are waking up to a new normal for our security, speaking of NATO's security, that peace cannot be taken for granted. That is NATO's view. That is the U.S. view. And if you were listening to Putin's words as he launched this attack, also in his address to his nation on Monday, he wasn't just threatening Ukraine, that significant enough, but he seemed to be challenging the, the post-Cold War order. He seemed to be setting his sights potentially on other Eastern European nations, some of whom are now members of NATO. Uh, that's where we stand. Uh, just one other thing I want to mention that the NATO Secretary General spoke mm. about. He reiterated that NATO has no intention of committing its own forces, its own troops, to fight Russia in Ukraine. 
It remains a military support operation, if you want to call it, call it that, supplying lethal assistance to the Ukrainian military. And he spoke of continuing that, but no NATO troops on the front line. That said, Russian forces and NATO forces are now in very close proximity. Uh, more NATO forces have been moved closer to that eastern frontier, close enough that the NATO Secretary General highlighted that deconfliction communication continues. That is, that's deliberate communication between NATO and the Russian side to make sure that their planes in their, the air, the ships on the seas, uh, their ground forces don't get too close to each other, don't misinterpret moves as attacks or act of, acts of war. That, that, John and Brianna, just highlights uh, the diciness, if, if you want to call it that, the danger of how when you have this much going on, the danger of escalation is real. Jim, I can just give people a sense of what you're talking about there. Uh, you're talking about NATO membership. There are new U.S. troops that are rotating in to Latvia up here. That, of course, all the way up here in the Baltic region. You can see it's right on the border with Russia. Ukraine uh, is obviously all the way down here. Poland, there's U.S. troops here now. Very close proximity, as you say, to Russian troops. Deconfliction is necessary. And one other thing, Jim, I just want to point out where you are. You're over here and leave. There have been reports now of explosions just all over, all over yeah. the country. This is mm -hmm. a large-scale, multi-targeted attack, including, I should note, we're getting reports not far from you. I know you've had air raid sirens there. What does this tell you? Yeah. Just the scale of what has happened over the last few hours. It tells you that Putin wants to take over Ukraine. It's an independent country. It has sovereign borders. It's democratic. It is twice uh, in a row elected presidents who promised closer uh, relations with the West uh, and, and more independence, not less, from Russia. Putin doesn't like that message. Uh, so he's using force to take it over and extending, uh, well, the whole extent of the country. Uh, when he says peacekeepers in the East because of Nazis, for which he provides no evidence, that's a cover. Uh, he's, in fact, carrying out an invasion of this country and attacking targets across the country uh, th that shows that his intention is to own the country. Right. Uh, and and that's, that's the way we should look at this military operation now. It's absolutely sad to think. It's absolutely sad to think that this is the situation that we're in right now absolutely sad um we are in a we are in a time right now where the, anything is possible right um i don't know what's going on with the blocking if it's something about language guys like watch your language if it's something that's being condescending or rude please be kind in the comments i you are totally fine with keeping your comments um, or, um, you know, uh, stating your comments. But obviously, if you're saying something that is uh, rude, discriminatory, or anything of that sort, you know what I'm saying? If you're keeping it classy, keep the comments rolling. I don't know what's going on. And, uh, you know, I don't know who, you know, I'm not watching the, ch the chat as much as I usually do. I was busy watching that video with everybody else. So if there's something going on um, and it was rude, then you might have been uh, uh, put on mute for a second there. But I have I'm obviously I can't control that. So mods, if you guys can just uh, whoever's listening and watching right now, I appreciate y'all. You guys are incredible, but also uh, just just be a little bit more choosy on uh, who gets blocked and all that. OK, so. Here it is. Um, moving on. A Powers. Thank you so much five, for the $5 Super Chat. What is exactly, exactly going on, please? And how does this affect the U.S.? So many questions. Um, well, one, that is something that um, I feel like we're going to have to get into more depth with here in a little bit. Um, you know, uh, I, I actually am trying to um, do this piece and talk about this and go into this other thing um now there is there's a lot that's going on between obviously the u.s and russia um and the thing is now i saw somebody cool hand luke's cool hand luke put up something um uh, a little bit ago and i'll say this uh i think that if any because the, Cool Hand Luke said something along the lines of, hey, if the, and I, I don't mean to uh, uh, misquote or, you know, uh, uh, 
whatever. But the thing is, is with what is here, um, okay. So I'm reading your comments and all this is going on. I get it. Whenever we start talking about anything that has to do with politics, uh, war, uh, and anything of that sort, people get very sensitive uh, and all that. So here it is. Uh, please. Uh, and this goes out to the mods and everybody who's in the chats, okay? If you're coming in here and saying stupid stuff and that's ignorant and rude, you will get muted, okay? But you have every right to speak your mind and say what you need to say here, okay? If it's if it's, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be absolutely in, in agreement with me, okay? So let me just say that really, really quick. But if you're cursing a whole bunch and saying a whole bunch of stuff that is rude or if it's an attack on me, you're going to get muted. OK, so just want to let you guys know that now when it comes to what Kuhan Luke said. Uh, and yes, I do understand. I, and I, there is a question about how this all started and all that. And I got a I got a video that I would love to show you guys here, but I got to unfortunately, I, I can't show it right now. Um, so here it is. Um and we love you too, Kuhan Luke. Real talk. We love you too. And everybody else who's been in the chat, we do appreciate the chats. Real talk. So Kuhan Luke said something along the lines of, hey, you know, if if you know the this is this is on the Democrats. I don't entirely agree. I think that if this is a situation where let's just say who was the two people that were running, okay? Uh again, like uh uh it was Biden and somebody else that was Republican. I still think that P Putin would still go after this. If it was his buddy Trump, this would be a different story. If Trump was reelected and he was back in in office, boom. Yes, there would not be this would not be happening right now. But I feel like it's only Trump and Trump only. I think he's the only person that sits there and goes, "Oh, by you know, uh, not Biden, Putin is a genius and so on and so forth." Okay? That's what he says. About Putin. So, of course, Putin is going to sit there and go, okay, I'll, I'll listen to my friend. You know what I'm saying? He'll listen to him. He'll listen to Trump. But if it was any other politician that happens to be right or left wing, this still would have gone down. I guarantee you that. So it's not really like, hey, blame the the the, the Democrats for voting to, you know, you know, Biden in and he's an idiot, so on and so forth. Wherever you stand on with Biden. If Biden or another Republican or Democrat president was voted in and there was no more Trump ever to, to grace the podium, okay, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, okay, Putin would have invaded without a shadow of a doubt. I guarantee you that, okay? I'm just going to say it right now, say it out loud and all that stuff. That's just what I think, okay? So, with that being said, okay, so with that being said, um, of course, uh, Biden has to, you know, is going to be jumping on here to talk about all this, okay? And, uh, and of course, we got to hear what he has to say about everything, okay? But right now, we have Putin who is saying something along the lines of, sorry, I'm like, I'm getting like hit up with all these different things left and right right now. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, he is saying along something along the lines of, hey, you know, there will be an attack like you've never seen before. It sounds very Trumpish, right? You're going to get, you, we going to attack like no one has ever seen before. Okay. Um, Sorry. So. And that's a very interesting thing, because it's you you instantly are going, what does that pertain to? What does he mean by that? You know what I'm saying? Does he mean something like is he does he mean a, a nuclear strike or not? Right. So let me get this thing up here real quick.
And it sucks because I'm going to have to leave fairly sooner than I expected because uh, we are in the middle of a snowstorm. And uh, I have to go and take care of something before the snow really hits. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but we got a we got a crazy snowstorm that's happening in my neck of the woods. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, that's why uh, you hear my phones, my phone ringing like crazy and all that. But anyway. So here it is. I can't sit here. I will never put all this blame on Biden alone. I know that everybody wants to sit there and, and, and blame the guy and blame, you know, whoever's in power. But I feel like this is something that has been brewing for a long time, for a very, very long time. I think Trump was able to quell this situation for a while. But then once he went out of office, it was kind of like, hey, man, I got things to do. That's what I think. That's what I personally think. But Everyone wants a scapegoat, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so that they can feel better and sleep better at night. But let's be real here, okay? This is something that has been a long time coming. It's been waiting. It's been on the helm for years, okay? So let's go into this article real quick. Putin spins a conspiracy theory that Ukraine is in the path to nuclear war. Let's get into this really quick. When Ukraine gave up a huge arsenal of nuclear weapons left on its territory after the collapse of the Soviet Union, it famously struck a deal with Washington, London, and Moscow trading the weapons for a, a guarantee of its security and borders. Not surprisingly, the Ukrainian government is wondering what happened to that degree. Or th to that guarantee, I'm sorry. But President Putin of Russia has a very different complaint. He's spinning out, out a conspiracy theory, perhaps as a pretext to seize the country in a military operation that began there early Thursday, that C Ukraine and the U U.S. are secretly plotting to put nuclear weapons back into the country. Putin's arguments occupied a third of his speech to the Russian people on Monday when he made a series of bizarre charges that Ukraine, quote unquote, Ukraine intends to create its own nuclear weapons. And this is not just bragging. Then he built a, a second case that the U.S. is converting its mis, uh, missile defenses into offensive weapons and has plans to put nuclear weapons on Ukrainian territory. Ukraine gave up a huge arsenal of uh, nuclear weapons left over by the uh, Soviet Union in the early 1990s and used the fuel from its blended down uh, warheads to give its nuclear power uh, to give its nuclear power plants. Okay. Or to drive its nuclear power plants. Today, Ukraine does not even have the basic infrastructure to produce nuclear fuel, though Putin, Mr. Putin, as they say, made the uh, dubious claim that it could pick that talent up quickly. Interesting. So he's spreading these theories out here right now as of, well, I guess he when he put out this video, when he put out this speech on Monday, that, hey, they're trying to sneak these things back into the Ukraine. Um, and the U.S. is trying to help them. Interesting, right? For their part, American uh, officials have said repeatedly that they have no plans to place nuclear weapons in the country and never have, especially since Ukraine is not a member of NATO. But that has not stopped Mr. Putin from building a hypothetical case that all those things ha could happen someday, theoretically putting Moscow at risk. He built he built on the theme of uh, he built on the theme at another news conference on Tuesday, embracing a th series of conspiracy theories that added together may well may well create the pretext to seize the entire country. If Ukraine acquires weapons of mass destruction, the situation in the world and in Europe 
will drastically change, especially for us, for Russia, he said. We cannot but we cannot but react to this real danger. All the more so all the more so since, let me repeat, Ukraine's Western patrons may help it acquire these weapons to create yet another threat to our country. What the hell? What in the hell? Putin has made such arguments before, of course, but usually as it decides, not as the justification for urgent action. So this guy is just trying to, he's grasping at straws, in my personal opinion. He's just going, these are all theories. These are all conspiracy theories that he has in the back of his mind. And he's going, hey, these guys are trying to be suited and booted to attack us, to attack the, the Russian people, to attack my people. So I need to send these guys out to make sure, send out our troops to make sure that this stuff doesn't go down. Interesting. It was starkly different from the, the tone Moscow was taking 30 years ago when Russian nuclear scientists were being voluntarily re, re, uh, retra retrained to use their skills for peaceful purposes and nuclear weapons were being removed from Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan with funds provided by American taxpayers. Interesting. But now he got a problem with it. Very interesting. It's very, very interesting. So he is now using this key argument fr from that era called the, the Budapest Memorandum to bolster his case. The memorandum signed by Ukraine, the U.S., Britain, and Russia enshrined the central bargain. Ukraine would surrender the entire nuclear arsenal left inside its territory. And in return, the other three nations would all guarantee Ukraine's uh, uh, security and integrity of its borders. So they, they, they give up all that stuff. They give up their nuclear weapons. And we supposed to be in there helping them out if they ever get in some sort of trouble like right now. And this is an agreement between, this was a, an agreement, a memorandum that was signed between Ukraine, Russia, the U.S., and Great Britain. Interesting. Very, very interesting. While Ukraine had physical control of the wet weapons, the launch authority for them had remained in the hands of the Russians. And the plot just keeps on thickening, y'all. And it just keeps on thickening. Now, where's the other one? There are some things where people are literally um, trying to right now escape from uh, Kiev, I, I I thought I thought it was Kiev, but Kiev. Um, people are literally trying to flee from this from this place. Now there is a video that I wanted to show you guys that is uh, absolutely heartbreaking, and this is just a full on example of what are we dealing with overseas right now? What we're dealing with in the Ukraine? There are people who are literally frantically trying to flee from their own country. But they're leaving their own family members behind or they're leaving. They're staying back so that they can stay and fight and try to push off uh, the push these these uh, Russian troops away from their homes. I, it, it's it's crazy. Regular civilians are staying and trying to fight. It's sad. It's fully, fully sad. But here you go. And this is on my uh, my Twitter. I just posted this a few hours ago, like about an hour ago on Twitter. Uh, shameless plug. Please follow me on Twitter. The Pascal show one word. That would really, really mean a lot. And uh, yeah, Neil Taylor, uh, we're going to get trolls, man. You know, it, it is what it is. Uh, my mods are doing beautifully. They're doing a really great job 
at taking care of the trolls. But hey, uh, as long as they keep it respectful and they're not sitting here asking for gloom and doom uh, and they're not attacking me, they should be okay in the chat. But it, I know, I know my, I know my uh, mods are doing the damn thing. They're doing the right thing. All right. Uh, so thank you so much. All right. Let's take a look at this. This is a family member. This is a father uh, putting their his family, uh, his wife and his daughter onto a bus so that they can get into a safe zone far away from the bombings, far away from the violence. Um, and he is basically saying his goodbyes to his daughter uh, so that he can stay back and protect his country. This is just devastating. Let's take a look. Now imagine, imagine being in this world where you are literally putting your daughter and your wife or your loved ones on a bus so that they can find refuge and you stay back and you are literally saying your goodbyes because this could very well be your last goodbye. This could be your very last time kissing your, your, your daughter's forehead. The last time you kiss your wife or your, your, your spouse, the last images, the last looks that you have with your family. And I don't know this man's background. I don't know what his story is. I don't know if he's a, you know, I don't know if he's a soldier. I don't know the, the, you know, the, what they're supposed to do. Cause I know there's a lot of countries that will, as soon as they get to a certain, certain age, they have to serve a certain amount of years in, in, in the military. I don't know if it's like that in the Ukraine, but there are some countries that are like that. So I don't know if he has any military training. We, he might be a soldier. He might not be a soldier. But imagine waking up or ending your day from work and all of a sudden there are bombs dropping all over you. Your neighbors and your families and other people that you know are, are getting rocked by this excessive bombing. It's sad. It is extremely sad. But I wanted to show you guys this because this is what war looks like too. This is the other side of war. It's not just the, the cuts and the bruises and, and, and the, those things. It is also the tearing apart of families. I, I hope to God that that man gets back with his family. But you never know. Sometimes war will pull a family apart where they don't see each other for where they don't get to see each other at all or they don't see each other for years, right? That's one of the other devastating parts of war. And I think everybody forgets that side of it. War sucks. <laughs> war absolutely sucks. And this is not the year or the time that we should be even doing this right now. We we just we just got through a panty. You know what I'm saying? We just been locked up for two years. And now we got to deal with this ish. It's like I said, just frustrating. And I feel that this same thing, all this that happened right now, would have happened under any other president's uh uh, uh time except for Trump. But as soon as he walked out, shoot, if he had a second term and he walked out after eight years, man, 
who would have been doing the same BS right now then? And we would still be talking about that and still be going, oh, my gosh, war sucks. That's what I think. But, you know, we can agree to disagree on that. Now, let me check to see if there has been anything, because I'm still waiting to see Biden say something. And I he he ain't said nothing so far. Which really, really sucks. Because I was really hoping that he was going to hop on here like right now. And so far, he hasn't said anything. Ah, this sucks. All right. Unfortunately, I have to, I'm going to have to run off. But I got to, uh, but I will run back on as soon as um, I, I, I have to run because this snowstorm is getting pretty intense and I, I got to go and take care of something before it gets too intense. But um, just a few more minutes. Okay. Because I, I mean, I'm, I, I got news going on in the background right over here. I got I got it right here. And I'm just waiting for this ish to pop off so we can actually hear what he has to say so I can jump off and run. But um, I might have to. I might have to just come back and just watch this. With y'all at a later time, unfortunately, this this sucks because uh, he said they said 1230. Uh, uh, Eastern time, then they pushed it a whole hour and I get it. There's a lot of information he's still probably trying to get right now, but, uh, I might have to wait and just come back and do that. Yeah. He's just going to, he most likely is just going to talk about sanctions, but you never know. He might say something about, he might declare war. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? The sky is the limit on what could be, what could be coming out of this man's mouth. Right. But there could be more sanctions, Right. He could just be talking about sanctions for sure. You ain't wrong, Kevzy. You ain't wrong at all. Um, but you know what? I'm gonna have to just jump off for right now, but I will hop back on when I get a when I get back. Okay. Um, but I'll say this: we have to remember that we all have different differing opinions. We all do. I, I do find it very interesting when people will hop on and 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 agree with uh, war, the the death of innocent lives and all that stuff. I do find that to be a bit strange. That's just my own personal opinion. Um, I I don't applaud this. I know that there's other people out here that do applaud this kind of stuff. I don't. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, at the same time, some people feel some type of way about this specific situation we need to look into it a little bit more and see what happens here but war is never the answer that's what i think period war is never the answer but anyway guys i'm gonna be back here in a little bit i gotta go and take care of something really quick but then i'll be back with the quickness all right do me a favor do not forget to hit that like button down below smash it crush it the whole nine do not forget to also uh, crush that subscribe button okay that would really really mean a lot i would really appreciate it uh and of course i might be late on his live but i'll i'll be doing it and checking it out with you guys um so that you guys can hear my opinions about all this ish but here we go uh, war is war is afoot right now y'all and this is insane um and it's it's this is just devastating but i'll be back as soon as i can okay guys I'll see you guys soon. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.